it's like, that's okay. They're just not ready yet, but you were still called there to speak. So I've had a lot of things happen where synchronistic, you know, guidance to go and speak on things, but I've been taught not to be too concerned about what everyone thinks about me and just give them time and give them the space to make their choices and to pay attention. Because a lot of times we might come into contact with someone of a high vibration that's bringing a lot of wisdom, but we don't know what to do with it yet. It's a little overwhelming. That's a lot of information, you know? And so we got to give them time to process it. But, um, I just, I love that movie and how there was so many times where they have to really listen to their hearts and have courage and go in directions that look scary and like maybe they don't get anything because of that choice. And often that's when the best things will come to you is when you really trust your heart and you really just know that no matter what, I'm going to keep trusting my heart and whatever's for the best for me, it's coming. And so I'll share example with my, the way I met Ron. First of all, Ron and I knew each other for years. We were both artists, and we met in like 2005 or six, somewhere in there, when I first moved to the Northwest. And um, speaking of that, I'm going to show you. We are doing an art show. I don't know if you can see this very good, but it's a yeah. picture of Ron and I. Um, we're doing an art show coming up on uh, July 12th and 13th. It's, it's for local people, but in case any locals are watching, it's going to be at English Estates Winery, and it's on July 12th, which is a Saturday, 11 to 7, and the 13th from 12 to 6. And what we put on our card, um, we're making, we both make a lot of art, but we took some of our art and we put it into prints and then framed them. And I put rhinestones like little Shorkoski crystals and um, we make clocks. And so I thought I was one day just like this idea came to me and it was, it's about time because you know, they're clocks, but it really summarizes Ron and I like we're together. We're having this art show together. We're starting to actually sell our art. We were with partners before and our art did not seem to sell. And we were like, what's going on? And so we call it, it's about time. And what's fun with how I met Ron is we had met years ago in an art gallery and we were just acquaintances. Um, he was married, I was married, but we knew of each other and we had like, t you know, been in meetings together at the art, art gallery and whatnot. And um, I was there for a little while and then I left that gallery for reasons and then few years later, I run into Ron um, downtown Vancouver. He's doing this art in the heart. And I run into him. I'm with my husband at the time. And we're like, hey, what's up? And we're just chatting. And he encourages me to come back to the gallery because they started a new gallery. And so I was like, hmm, let me think about that. And so I decided to go back and give it another shot. And so him and I were connecting again, but as acquaintances. And... Um, in G December of 2012, I left my marriage and I, I remember a lot of so many signs. I mean, we could, I'm writing a book actually about all of it. So I'll bring that. And if you all want to know that story, you can buy a book. But basically when I made the decision to leave my marriage and this was a very long process, like I did not make this decision lightly and I've been asking for years and I finally made the decision to leave. And I looked at the clock, and it was 11.11, right at that moment that I had decided it was time to go. And if you look up the angel number, if you want to learn more about angel numbers, um, Google, go to your computer and Google spiritual meaning of 11.11 or 555 or whatever number, and then read the Joanne Sacred Scribes website. It's just of a very high frequency. I really feel that the vibration of that site is more in alignment than some. And basically, I saw 1111, and it's all representative of independence and liberation and following your soul mission. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, that is perfect. And so it really helped me seeing that number right then, even though it was a little scary, because this was going to be a big process. And I knew it in my gut. I knew I was preparing for a battle. I didn't want to, but you just kind of know it. And so I see that number, and it just gave me that guidance and assurance from my angels that I was making the right choice and that I wasn't alone and that they were going to be with me and that everything was going to work out for my highest good for listening. So that happened. And then Ron, huh. I found this out later, his, um, 
his wife left him in January that of 2013. And so he and I reconnected in March where I was doing an art show. I was doing the, the front window display. And so I was there for several hours decorating this window display for an art show. And he was just asking me things about how I was doing after leaving my marriage and told me that his wife had left him. And so we're just connecting and kind of, I'm using that healer part of myself to help him and counsel, just offer him counseling and um, support and compassion. And then this, I was dating some guy at the time. I dated a couple guys after my marriage. And so what happened was I dated a couple guys and they all kind of reminded, well, not all of them. A few of them come, reminded me of my ex-husband energetically, the controlling aspect, the degrading aspect, um, not really supportive of my angelic and spiritual part of myself and kind of shaming that and telling me that they thought it was weird and I shouldn't be talking about it. And so there was some tests to see, will Tanya tolerate this again, or is she going to really see this energy and clear it completely? So one morning I was driving home, and I had just realized that this was the last day I would be um, seeing this guy that I've been seeing and that this wasn't going to work out. And I, I kind of knew, and I had told him that I was there to help him heal things from his past relationship. And he very bluntly said, I don't need a healer for a girlfriend. And so I was like, okay. And so pretty much I knew the universe would be sending me back into orbit very soon. And so as I was driving home that morning, I wasn't really angry, but I was just talking out loud to my angels in the car. And I was just like, I am done with these guys that are attracted to me and they like my magic and they like my power when they're first seeing me, but then they want to slowly start chiseling away at it and start causing me to doubt myself or they want to slowly start controlling me done. Like that is not going down anymore. I will rather, I'd rather be alone than be with someone like that. So I'm saying this very loud in my car and the whole universe was getting this message from Tanya and, uh, so after I said what I was done with and I was ready to clear, I out loud said, thank you, universe. Thank you, angels, for bringing me the one. I am ready for my twin flame. I am ready for the one who is here to support my soul mission. The one who's here who will love me and honor me for the unique being that I am and will not have a problem with that. And so I'm being very clear in all this. Well, I get home and I'm setting up for an event that night where I'm teaching at the gallery a workshop on the laws of attraction. And so I get there and I'm teaching my workshop and Ron's there. He comes in and he was sent to close the gallery. So he's watching and listening to my presentation. And afterwards, he came up to me and he was just like, wow, that was amazing. And He's like, are you hungry? I really, I'm going to go get something to eat. Would you like to come with? So I just think this is casual, like friend thing. And I was like, sure. And so I go with him. And this happened right when that night I could have gone on a date with my ex-husband. He was still trying to get back with me. And I remember just thinking, I'm done with that direction. And I'm going to go in this direction. And not even like a dating thing, but just a choice of where I was going to spend my time. So I go on this you know, little dinner thing. And during it very quickly, I start seeing how Ron's behaving. And I realized, Oh, this is a date. Like just the way he's acting, I can tell. And so I was just kind of watching him like, Hmm, that's very curious. Like Ron Jones, huh? Like, let's see where this goes. And he comes over and we're talking and he's just opening up his life story to me. And I am listening to him. And then he says something to me, he looks at me. He's like, Tanya, I feel like tonight, as I was watching you speak to every one of those people, and you were connecting so deeply with each one of them, I just feel like I saw you for the first time. And I was just like, what? Like, there was so many things that happened, him and I coming together. We started dating pretty quickly after I had helped him with some art shows, and then we started dating. There was so many synchronistic events that happened, like, where we went to look at some woman's art and they played, um, they chanted and played music. And I was just like, Oh, do you want to play for us? And he normally would just go look at people's art and then leave. Well, because I was there, I was really tuning into them and they ended up doing this live concert for us, serving us tea. And as we're sitting on the floor, 
I just felt, and so did he, like the universe was giving us this concert and was like bringing our energies together. And so synchronistic moments can be so amazing and magical. And the more we pay attention, this is the difference between we stubbornly go this direction to be with a certain person we want to date, no matter what it's showing us, no matter how much it's kicking our butt energetically, or we surrender and we trust and we feel the heart's guidance and we pay attention to the magical connection with this energy and this direction. And so it can be so amazing. And now I'm with my beloved. We've been together over a year and we're the best of friends, but we laugh sometimes. We just think about, wow, like there was times I remember I went to hang some art and he was there with his um, wife at the time. And I was there with my husband. We walked in and we're hanging art. And he kept talking about how, isn't it awesome to be married? Don't you think it's so awesome to be married? And he kept talking about it. And I, I'm very empathic. So I was tuning into him and I was just like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, what is he trying to convince himself of? Like something's really off there. And why is he talking to me? Like he kept looking at me and telling it to me. And so I left. And I remember telling my husband at the time, like, wasn't that kind of odd that he kept talking about how great it was to be married. Like it was like, he was trying to convince himself that like, he's really sad and he's not really authentically happy. And my ex-husband was like, I don't know. I didn't pay attention, which is true. And so we get out of there and I don't think of it that deeply that day, but now that I'm with Ron and I look back, I realize, Oh my God, like you were talking to my soul and I could feel him talking to it. I just didn't understand why he was. And I, there was like some part of me that felt a connection, but didn't know what I was supposed to do about it. And because it wasn't the right timing. So if you watch the movie serendipity, it'll make sense there. It's all about divine timing. And really following those little breadcrumbs along the path until we reach our destination. And really, that's about what I love to call angel time. The universal time is really we're trusting and we're flowing and we're allowing. But when we're an ego, we're an ego mind, we think we control it all. It's our time. This is when it's going to happen. And if I don't get this internet show now, I'm going to just be miserable and I'm going to be angry or I'm going to go make that show happen. And a lot of humans spend their lives like this, really making things happen, trying to force the timing, force it to go down. There was years that I was an actress and I was working so hard to try to make it as an actress. And like, I wanted to say something. I had made movies for the film festival and I was working so hard to just get out there, but I didn't have that confidence or really know that I was worthy. So a lot of people weren't even paying me for the work I was doing. And recently I'm being approached by directors from my past. So like, Tanya, I would like to do another movie with you. Are you interested? And I was like, what? And so you just got to let go and trust that when the timing's right, it's all going to flow. And if there's something that your soul's here to create and to be a part of, you're going to know it. You're going to feel it in your energy. You're going to feel that passion inside. And you just need to trust the flow. You need to trust the difference in the vibration of what it feels like to go against the stream where you're just suffering, you're beating your head against the wall, and what it feels like to go with the flow and that feels very, it's ease, it's grace, it feels good. So remember how last week I was talking about vibration? I cannot say that enough to each of you. Your vibration and your frequency is the magical ingredient to everything. Amnon manifesting that Jeep and the love of his life, it came from a vibrational alignment. He maybe didn't know that at the time, maybe that logical, that part of the, the words weren't there, but part of him knew that's going to be mine one day. And he just held that focus and he didn't get angry when it wasn't his. He's just like, that's going to be mine one day. And maybe some part of him was even like, that's going to be mine one day and it's going to come to me at a great price. And then boom, it did. Right, Amnon? Right. Exactly. See? Yes. And so it's really having that patience and until you get what you want, you stay in a frequency of gratitude. You stay in a frequency of having. So instead of, I don't have that job yet, so I'm going to be pissed off at the job I'm at. Or I don't have that relationship yet, so I'm going to be pissed off with the person I'm with. 
the best way you can get out of any energy or situation is to have gratitude for what you have and then be open to the universal flow guiding you to where you really want to go next and 